I believe that the price for a full life is mistakes. Mistakes are the price for a full life that you have to pay if you learn from them. I believe that hell wants to maim you and mock you with your mistakes. But heaven wants to make you and transform you by your mistakes. Failure should not become a prison house where you're held hostage the rest of your life by your mistakes. That's not God's voice. That's not God's will. That's not God's plan for you. The enemy wants us to think that our failure is final because I've seen us go through things where the enemy tried to take us out by a failure or a mistake or a terrible choice. Your mistakes are not final. Your failure is not final. Rejoice not over me, O oh my enemies. For when I fall, I will rise again. When I sit in darkness, the light will come. I want somebody to hear me clearly. You might have made a mistake, but you're not one. You might have failed, but you're not a failure. You might be down, but down is not your destiny. There is a resurrection coming to your dream, to your life, to your call, to your purpose. You might have fallen and you might have failed and you might have made a mistake, but you are not a mistake. And God will never define you by the worst mistake and choice you made in life. Critics will, attackers will, haters will, people will, but God will never define you by your worst mistake. And I need you to thank him that great is his mercy towards us. I love the story of Simon Peter. I love the fact that God loved him after he messed up. That's why when the angel appeared at the tomb, the angel said, Jesus wants me to specifically name one of the disciples by name. He said, go tell my disciples and Simon Peter to meet me in the upper room. The same guy who denied Christ, the same guy who lied, the same guy who cut a man and got violent, the same guy who fell and failed miserably. He said, you tell my disciples and you tell Peter. He named him specifically, I believe, because he wanted his critics to hear. I'm still, I do believe in my good disciples, but I also still believe in my fallen disciples. And I'm here to preach to some people who've messed up and the enemy's told you, your call is over, your, bless, your dream is, is shredded, you don't have any hope, you don't have any future. There is restoration available for you and he still has his hand on your life. Isn't this something that it was Simon Peter who preached on the day of Pentecost? He didn't choose the other 11. He chose the one who messed up. And that's what I've come to prophesy and preach to tonight that some of you have fallen, some of you did it, some of you messed up, but the Lord sent me to tell you there's still life in your dream. There's still life in your call. There's still life in your purpose. There's still life in what God has called you to do. Realize failure is not final. Failure is not final. We live in a culture that says, if at first you don't succeed, give up. No. You know, one reason most of us don't venture out and start pursuing our God-given dreams in life, we are paralyzed by the fear of failure. We think, oh, what if I apply for this job and I don't get it? You know, what if I ask that person out on a date and they don't say yes? What if I, you know, do this and it doesn't work? They're paralyzed by failure. Remember this, nobody stubbed his toes standing still. <laughs> I mean, if you're moving forward, you are going to stub your toe from time to time, but you're also going to move forward. I mean, I think of Thomas J. Watson, the founder of IBM. He said, the way to succeed is to double your failure rate. 
What does he mean by that? Double your failure rate. He was saying the more times you try something, the more ventures you pursue, yes, the more times you're going to fail, but you're also going to succeed more as well. You have to fail if you're going to succeed. George Bernard Shaw, great novelist, had his first five novels rejected. <laughs> Babe Ruth struck out 1,330 times, but he's considered one of America's greatest baseball players. Thomas Edison discovered 1,800 ways not to make a light bulb. But all of those men were tremendous successes. Guess what? The more resumes you send out, yeah, the more rejections you'll get, but the more likely you'll get a bite on it. Uh, the more doors you knock on, the more people you share your faith with, yeah, the more rejections you're gonna have, not of you, but of Christ, but the more opportunities to lead people to Christ. That's why it is important that we understand that failure is not final. Dennis Waitley in his book, Seeds of Greatness says, winners work at doing things the majority of the population are not willing to do. Do you desire to achieve your God-given purpose in life? Expect to work hard. And don't be discouraged when other people seem to be making progress and you seem to be standing still. I think of the words of Amy Carmichael, that great Christian writer. Words that have been an encouragement to me at certain times in my life. Perhaps you'll find encouraging as well. She says, sometimes when we read the words of those who have been more than conquerors, we feel almost despondent. I feel that I shall never be like that, we think. But these people won through step by step, by little bits of wills, little denials of self, little inward victories, by faithfulness in very little things. They became what they are. No one sees these little hidden steps. They only see the accomplishment. But even so, those small steps were taken. Now listen to this. There is no sudden triumph, no sudden spiritual maturity. That is the work of the moment. Perseverance is the determination to continue pursuing your God-given dreams in spite of unanticipated, unexpected setbacks, undeserved criticism, and unrelenting hard work. Perseverance is the attitude that says, I will not give up. Some of my favorite words about the value of perseverance come from President Calvin Coolidge. Press on. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful people with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are overwhelmingly powerful. Successful people are those who continue pursuing their God-given dreams. But when those unmovable obstacles come into our life, we have one of two choices. We can either just give up, or like Paul, we can view those problems as brilliantly disguised opportunities to trust in God. What you don't know is that the best lessons I've learned, I've learned through inadequacy and failure. Disappointment and heartbreak and forgiveness by the grace of God, I've come to the place where I no longer fear failure, and I've come to the place where I will be always grateful for God's grace to forgive when I don't measure up to my unrealistic standard. Please, men and women, please understand, only God is adequate. You're not. Only God is perfect. You're not. Only Christ can set goals of that high and reach them. You can't. You do your best. The good news is that God in his grace uses us warts and all. There's a wonderful scripture in Proverbs that's helped me a lot. 
And it says this, Proverbs 24, verse 16. It says, the righteous person falls or fails seven times and rises again. The perfect, the, the person that's close to God, the, the righteous person, the holy person, you know, falls, fails seven times. That's a multiplicity of times, but he rises again. In other words, it's okay to fail. It's okay to, to have this fear of failure, but you know, we will rise again. Imagine if it said the stupid person or the idiot falls seven times, okay? It doesn't say that. It says the holy person, the righteous person, the person that's close to God falls or fails seven times, but rises again. So that's a, that's a wonderful promise. So maybe you've fallen down. Maybe you're not happy where you are in life. Maybe you have all of these regrets and say, oh yes, I, I deserve it. You know, look, I'm in this dead end life. Nothing's working out for me. But it says that you will rise again, okay? In fact, I think our dreams are always on the other side of our failures. And Michael Jordan, he says this, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game winning shot and I missed. I failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. There's failure everywhere. There's behavioral failure, moral failure. There's failure of making promises to yourself and then breaking them. There's just failure everywhere. What do you do when you're then hit with failure? Many people think that once you become a Christian, you never experience failure, but that's not true at all. Some of the people who are closest to God have experienced failure, and what you do with that failure determines the kind of life that you're gonna live. Many people who experience failure, Satan, the devil that Jesus talks about, uses the failure to bring condemnation and guilt, bothers them at night when they try to sleep, and the next thing you know, they have a heavy spirit. Many times their heavy spirit leads to bitterness, cynicism, and they quit, they give up life. They're walking, but they're not alive any longer. They're making a living, going to their job, but that failure haunts them, letting down God or their family, their friends. And other people have the same failure, or worse failure, and instead of it bearing them, they turn out to become stronger through their failure. Just like a bone that's broken, they say when it's healed, that bone is stronger than before you break it. The Christian life is made up of 10,000 fresh new beginnings. Today, you can have a new beginning with God. He doesn't throw you away because you messed up. Can we all say amen to that? God is a God of a second chance. Forget it. I've heard people that God is the God of a second chance. That's ridiculous to me. How about God is the God of the two millionth chance? You're going to make it. Just start a new fresh with God today. You can always have a new beginning with God. If you just come to him, he will help you. Jesus is love. Even when our love breaks down, he picks us up and you fail the Lord, remember, his love hasn't changed. He loves you. Don't believe what the devil says. He loves you. Don't believe what some voice in your mind says. He loves you. He loves you. God loves you. I know he's perfect, and you and I are a mess, but he loves you. That's who the kind of God he is.